Radku, omlouvám se, jestli už mluvíš, tak nejsi slyšet vůbec. Hello? Ano, dobrý, slyšíme. OK, sorry for that. So uh, let me repeat that, uh, that uh, uh, any time you have a question, please use your hands or microphone or chat uh, and uh, you can ask any time. I will try to that answer. And today we will, we will uh, speak about AI planning uh, and the outline of uh, my lecture is about the classical planning. I will define the problem. I will uh, um, then uh, specify how it can be solved in the state space. We will see that uh, uh, search for the plans can be also accomplished in the plan space. And uh, there are also powerful techniques which use uh, planning graph. And in the second half, uh, I will try to uh, define uh, another branch of the planning, HTN, hierarchical task network planning. We will define it. We will see how it can be solved in the uh, simple, let's say, setup the full setup, and then I will show you some examples, um, including Shop, Shop2, and PyHop implementation. So what is uh, a planning? Planning, concept of planning, it has many uh, definitions and many aspects. And in fact, it is a kind of scheme, program, method uh, that uh, one can use before and it will try to let's say with a plan to accomplish and kind of objective so basically it is a kind of uh, making a vision of uh, of sequence of actions or let's say a set of actions that can reach uh, the objective and goals Mm, from the abstract point of view, it, we deal with the uh, environment. We, uh, we have an agent in that environment. That agent uh, interacts with the environment and it tries to ac accomplish a given task. So the motivation uh, of the planning process is to create such sequence of actions that changes in the environment uh, in order to reach the goal, the task uh, that should be achieved. Uh, in fact, we have two kind of branches. Um, the first is called scheduling and the other one planning. Think is basically you are given the initial state of the environment, you know what kind of goal you try to achieve, and you have a set of operators that we can use to change the environment. And uh, the goal is to find a sequence of operators or the network of operators that reach uh, uh, the goal state from the initial state. In other words, if you apply action by action, uh, it will change uh, the state of the environment in the such a sequence that the final state uh, is uh, basically the, the goal state. In scheduling, the stress is put on something different. You have a resources, you have a actions, and constraints how these actions can and resources can be used. And you try to find the schedule that meets this constraint. In other words, how to arrange actions, how to assign resources in such a way that they satisfy the constraints 
and and the goal is reached let's go back to the planning so in planning the general system can be described in the following way you have a systems uh, where some exogenous events might happen that system is observed by a controller and control provides its execution status to the planner planner operates uh, based on the knowledge of the system it, the system is somehow described at the beginning it knows the actual initial state of the system and the objectives that should be achieved based on this information it generates plans which are provided back to the controller a controller performs those actions uh, uh, to the system and in this feedback uh, let's say system uh, we try to accomplish the objectives so from this point of view uh, we can treat the environment as a state transition system that is can be described by states actions a uh, by those exogenous events and state transition function in other words a function that um, maps the current state after the application of the action or event to uh, one of the possible uh, outcome state example uh, from the domain of dog worker robots for example in port of hamburg where uh, the harbor uh, has a several do locations docks in which there are docked ships then uh, there is a storage area uh, with the containers and many uh, let's say uh, vehicles like trains trucks that uh, move containers back and forward and the goal is that the cranes load or unload ships and the robot carts move containers around Uh, this task uh, can be uh, described in abstract way in the following way basically we have a, a set of states one of them is initial state s0 for example in this case and it is this one so this rectangle is the description of the state and you have a uh, actions put make move one move two and so on that describes how a given state is transformed into another state uh, the objective uh, is given by a goal state however it can be also a set of goal states or set of tasks or uh, one can even describe uh, prescribe a trajectory of states that should be accomplished or it can be uh, uh, provided as an objective function in this example simple example the goal state is just s5 here so we are searching basically uh, for a sequence of states uh, take move one load and move two that transforms s0 state through the s1 s3 s4 to s5 as you can see uh, the plan is not just one because you can also go from s0 to s2 s3 s4 and to s5 rectangles are state arrows are actions and the function that changes uh, the state uh, the transition function is basically represented using the triple uh, state action uh, state 
plan. So uh, the objective is to create the, that sequence. Uh, and the sequence can take several representations. The first one is a classical plan. It basically means that you try to create a sequence of actions. And as I described, it can be just that take, move one, load, and uh, move two to reach uh, S5 uh, from S0. However, uh, the plan can be uh, represented also as a policy. Uh, sorry. And policy is uh, and the policy is a partial function uh, from state into action. In other words, you prescribe what to do in state S0, in S uh, in state S1, for example, and in S1, you specify that you should take move one and so on. So uh, the policy is a kind of uh, associative array that says if you reach a given state, then perform this and this action. Now here we have a full uh, first questionnaire uh, for you, and I. I will ask you, uh, what do you think about the order of magnitude that can be reached uh, uh, for the size of state space and the branching factor during the search in practical domains? So in other words, I am asking uh, uh, you to guess, uh, uh, let's say, how many states uh, uh, practical domains can reach and how many actions in average uh, uh, can be applied a given state. So I'm creating the all uh, and run it. Please uh, respond. We have 100 states, branching factor 10, B, 10 up to 1,000 states, and branching factor above 10 up to 100. We have a 1 billion states, and branching factor about 100,000. And D is 100,000 states, and branching factor about 1,000. So still, some of you are voting. OK, I will stop it. We have 17 responses. So uh, here is the uh, response. Uh, let's say uh, almost the half of you think that the D uh, is something which is realistic. Some of them believe that this weird B is uh, actually the, uh, the right answer. And some of them uh, take those A and C. Well, uh, you will see the answer in, um, let's say, several slides, uh, several slides later on. Now, I can tell you that uh, in practical domains, uh, is the, let's say, we reach the B. And you will see why. Uh, the D is uh, some kind uh, the answer based on your experience from, uh, I believe, from your, let's say, um, 
ex experience from the let's say accomplished uh, projects and so on however uh, uh, in classical planning we deal with issues that reaches in um, on basically uh, general cases the B situation uh, although uh, it is not representable uh, by machines and you will see how we tackle these uh, problems okay thank you for your response uh, and let me continue so uh, the planners well, they can be domain specific, tuned for a specific domain, for example, for the harbor, uh, for the, uh, let's say, uh, machinery production and so on. And uh, uh, they work successfully in, let's say, real world planning system many times. However, nobody can expect that those planners will uh, work well if at all, in any other domain. We try to create uh, a, a planner that can work in any planning domain in principle. Such implementation cannot use domain-specific knowledge and those uh, information about what kind of actions and what kind of objects we deal with in the specific environments uh, are provided as the external data. In practice, I can tell you immediately that it is not feasible to develop uh, domain independent planners that can work in every possible domain. It is always somehow restricted. So we need to make a simplifying assumption to restrict and to, uh, let's say, to make a decomposition of those domains. And here is the exactly the case when classical planning, uh, uh, let's say, approaches us. So what kind of assumption we can make? Uh, that the system is finite. That means we deal with uh, finitely many states, finitely many actions and events. It is fully observable. The control, as always, can observe any uh, variable, any, uh, let's say, aspect of the current state. Deterministic. If the system performs an action, then there is just only one outcome. Th that means it is not a kind of random-based uh, selection of different outcomes. Static. Uh, we assume that no exogenous events are, uh, let's say, can perform any other actions. So basically, everything is uh, all action, uh, all changes in the environment are performed through the control controller's actions. Attainment goals assumption. Well, we assume that the set of goal states is um, uh, exists and can be reached. Sequential plans. We assume that a plan is a linearly ordered sequence of actions from A uh, using actions from A0 to AN. Implicit time. We don't usually in uh, planners deal with the uh, time durations. So it is just a kind of logical time, a linear sequence of uh, actions uh, that changes states. And uh, another quite often uh, assumption is that we perform that in offline manner. In other words, uh, the execution status provided uh, by the controller to the planner is uh, not uh, deal with, uh, and planner does not know it. If we use all of these eight assumption, then we basically have a system that is an offline generation of action sequences for a deterministic, static, finite system with a complete knowledge, attainment goals, and implicit time. And the 
whole problem of planning is reduced uh, to a system that can be described by, uh, let's say, the uh, system and we will, the domain, we will see how later on, initial state as zero and a subset of goal states. And our goal is to find a sequence of action P plan that is a basically sequence from A0 to AN actions that produces a sequence of uh, states through the transitions in a such a way that the last state SN belongs to the sub subset of goal states. And, uh, and the problem can be shown that it is just a path searching in a graph where states are represented by nodes and actions by edges. And the question, is this trivial? Because uh, I believe that uh, you perform during your study many path searching in graphs. So you could say, well, it should be. And your answer, D, basically uh, somehow uh, be, uh, uh, let's say reflects that you believe that it is uh, trivial. Well, let me show a very simple example that deals with the cargo transportation by planes. You have a 10 airports, 50 aircrafts, and 200 pieces of cargo. Now, it can be shown that such a system uh, can be in one of uh, 10 up to 400 uh, states. The minimum actions uh, from a given state is 450 when all cargo is located uh, um, on airports with uh, no planes. And on the other side, if all cargo and aircrafts are located in one airport, then the number of actions uh, you can use uh, from that state uh, is 10 up to 340. So you can see that this is quite very simple example, not quite difficult, still leading to the huge number of, uh, uh, let's say, states and branching factor. Uh, just uh, to remind you that the number of particles in the universe is estimated being about 10 up to 87. In other words, it, you have no even one particle in the universe to be assigned to a given state in such uh, uh, here uh, the example. And that's, uh, uh, and the question is that uh, then how to deal with uh, such a task. So uh, from which it, it is obvious that you can't use the traditional techniques for path searching uh, through the state space. And that's the domain of so-called automated planning research, when uh, the researchers are, let's say, usually uh, investigate the so-called classical planning uh, mostly. And uh, let's say up to now, uh, hundreds of different algorithms are known. So how to tackle uh, such a huge problem? Well, uh, let's start uh, to treat planning as a theory proving. So the word state uh, can be described as a set of propositions. And even action uh, basically can be described in such a way that first you need to check if a given action can be applied. So there are so-called applicability conditions. And they are also represented as a set of formulas. If action, if the action can be, uh, is applicable and is applied, then it changes a set of formulas. Some of them are added and some of them are removed. And these, uh, addition and removals are 
uh, called effects. So we have an action described by a condition and effects. Uh, then uh, a strips representation uh, was introduced. It is very similar to the propositional representation. However, it uses uh, so-called literals of the first order instead of propositions. And you will see immediately what I mean uh, by that. It is a basic a name and a kind of tuple of constant. Uh, and state is represented using state variables. So basically state is a k tuple, k variables, uh, so-called state variables from x1 to xk. Uh, action in this representation is basically a partial function over states. It does not uh, map a state directly to another state, like um, just uh, two objects, but the change is described using selected variables. And we deal here with a so-called factored state representation. So instead of using uh, instead of using um, uh, atomic representation of states, where basically each state is a is a node uh, that uh, is further cannot be divided and you can't see any kind of internals. And this representation would lead to the full search, uh, uh, let's say, of all possible states. You can use so-called factored state representation. So each state is a collection of variables that are valid or invalid. And uh, the action is then represented in, in the following way. The first, you check the conditions uh, in that state. So basically, you select several small subset of variables. You check their values. And if they are in the appropriate con uh, configuration, then the action can be applied. And the application of the action uh, means that some variables, other variables, for example, like these four, uh, changes their values. Uh, now, if you think about this representation, uh, it is a huge difference uh, let's say regarding to the with respect to the original atomic representation and it hides itself the complexity of the whole problem why because all other variables of the state that are not described in the conditions of the actions uh, in the condition of the action or in the effects can be can have an uh, arbitrary value. In other words, that action does not describe a specific change of one given state to another one, uh, but uh, how a huge number of uh, states that shares, the, uh, let's say, the configuration of these variables uh, can be changed. And that's the reason why, uh, uh, and this, this is the power of, uh, let's say, how to tackle with that uh, uh, the huge uh, state space uh, um, uh, that, uh, uh, let's say, the planning deals with. So instead of dealing with a specific state, we operate here with a subspaces of states. So strips, uh, strips can be defined using the first order language with a finitely many predicate symbols, uh, finitely many constant symbols, and no function symbols. Uh, then state uh, is uh, represented as a set of ground atoms, so basically uh, names and constants. Uh, 
and we say that atom P holds in the state S if you can find uh, that atom in the state. You can are able to find the literal with the uh, with the, the, the constant values uh, in that um, uh, state specification. On the other side, state satisfies a set of literals G, written as S satisfies G, if every positive literal in G uh, can be found in the state S, and every negative literal in G is not cannot be located there. Let me make example state in that DWR uh, domain uh, is described, for example, using this uh, a set. You can see as a set of letters, names, and constant, saying that the pile P1 is attached to the location uh, uh, location one, or location two. A location one is adjacent to location two, or that row and, and a robot R1 here is located at location two. Location two is occupied, and robot R is unloaded. So this is the way how to describe the state using um, strip notation using letters. So this is the description of the domain. Now we need something uh, you can use uh, uh, for uh, uh, changing. So you need that uh, kind of action or operators. A planning operator is a triple that has name, as I mentioned, you need uh, preconditions uh, of the applicability to be verified and some effects. Name, usually it is in the form uh, that you have a name and a set of variables that are used. Uh, preconditions and effects are again uh, described using sets of letters. Here we used variables. If we replace, substitute those variables by their values, then uh, we get so-called action. So operator is general kind of prescription. Action is a ground instance of the planning operator. Example, operator move robot R from the location L to location M. Preconditions for this action is that location L is adjacent to location M. The robot uh, is located at location L. And M, the location, the, the, the goal location, is not occupied. Effects, that means what you change here in the state, is that a robot will be finally at location M, and M location will be occupied, while uh, it is not valid anymore that location L is occupied, and it is not also valid uh, that uh, robot is at the location L, and in the similar way the, the other uh, uh, operators. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, um, if we search for the application uh, that can change a uh, given state, uh, we basically search for uh, applicable action. So first denote that if L is a set of letters, then L plus is a set of atoms that are positive letters. Uh, and L minus means that uh, is a set uh, of atoms whose negations are in L. Uh, A is an action, S is a state. So then we can uh, uh, define that A is applicable in the state S if, and only if, if P 
pre all positive uh, letters of pre of the condition a uh, are located in the state s and all negative are not there not there that means the uh, intersection with a um, with a set of letters in the state is empty if action is applicable it can be applied and then uh, state transition function gamma uh, says what uh, let's say what kind of result state we reached uh, that means if a is applied to the state s it means that first we remove all negative letters uh, of a from the state s and then we perform the union uh, let's say with a positive uh, uh, letters in basically what is not valid anymore is removed from the state and we add those letters which describes uh, the let's say the changes so to specify the planning domain uh, we basically use a function free first order language and uh, and the whole domain is described using uh, s a set of uh, strip states that means set of ground atoms uh, a set of actions ground instances of actions in the uh, ground instances of planning operators and the gamma is the transition function described uh, describing how uh, let's say uh, what is the result what what is the result state uh, if action a is applied to the input states to the entry state and it is exactly the formula uh, which we just described if a is applicable otherwise it is undefined S is closed under the gamma, meaning that you are not able to generate, um, uh, uh, let's say, uh, states uh, that uh, are not, uh, let's say, in the state S, and uh, uh, gamma is not able to generate other states. The planning problem. So, so far, we, dis let's say, described generally uh, with the domain where we try to make plans. The planning problem itself is an instance of such a, a let's say, task. That means we have a, that description of the domain, uh, sigma. And furthermore, we have a initial state, si, and, uh, uh, and a set of uh, ground letters describing the goal that means uh, uh, like uh, let's say all possible state which we consider as a, to be a goal state so the planning problem in the dwr domain um, is that uh, we have the description of the actions and we further add uh, initial state it can be any state, uh, or for example, like here as zero, that is basically uh, uh, describing the initial li valid letters uh, of this situation. And the goal state can be specified that the robot uh, is not unloaded. In other words, it is loaded and, uh, and it is located at location two as an as a example, goal state. Uh, during the time, a specific language, so-called PDDL, planning domain definition language, uh, uh, has been developed. Originally, it uh, uh, you could use it for, uh, let's say, just the uh, specification of basic strip style actions however then it was several times extended the current version is 
3.x uh, and you are able to describe planning domains, the requirements, type predicates, possible actions and so on generally and also the planning problems that means what actual uh, objects are in the specific situation there uh, and mm, uh, let's say sit, uh, how to describe the initial situation, the goal description and so on. And there are many other uh, possible ways and extensions uh, reflecting, uh, let's say, the most, uh, let's say, the adva more advanced planners. State space. So now we are approaching how to search through the state space. Of course, uh, we as can assume that we could use propositional logics and a kind of hill climbing searching, possibly to use A star um, heuristics. However, uh, till the year about the 2000, no such suitable heuristic um, uh, was known and it was missing for decades. Uh, the idea is to use breadth first, first, depth first, search, A star, and so on. And in this way, the planning problem task can be viewed as a, uh, a kind of searching technique uh, through the uh, state space in a such a way that you try to search only its subspace. And again, uh, to stress it, nodes represent the states, edges correspond to the state transitions and you try to find the path uh, which transforms the initial state to the uh, final state, the goal state. So if uh, a planning problem is simple like this one, you have only six states, several actions, uh, it is quite easy to, uh, let's say, to find the path uh, through this system. Uh, there are basically two algorithms, well, let's say the, uh, from the general point of view. One of them is uh, um, that the search is performed in the forward way, that means from the initial state to the goal state. And it can be described quite easily that at the beginning you are basically in the state, uh, in initial state, you have an empty plan. If uh, the state uh, satisfy the goal, then you know that the plan is uh, already known. If not, you try to uh, find all applicable actions um, uh, that are uh, based on the, that the preconditions of those extensions are satisfied in the state as. If that uh, set is empty, then you return the failure. If not, then you perform a non-deterministic choice of an action from this set. And you know that after the application of the gamma function, you receive the new state and you step-by-step uh, step create, a, let's say, the plan P by chaining of uh, these discovered actions. So this is the forward way. Uh, you can also, Based on this uh, presentation, uh, you can also derive the algorithm which works in the backward way. In other words, you start from the goal and step by step you go to the initial state. And the reason is that basically the, represent the factored representation of states allows to check, to uh, let's say, the effects and to define uh, the conditions uh, in the let's say, previous uh, state. Here we speak about that the action A is re relevant for G, for the set of, uh, let's say, um, letters, if uh, effects uh, of A are uh, basically covers some of letters of the goal, and furthermore, it does not contradict the rest. That means the what is valid in uh, G plus is, uh, uh, let's say, does not belong to the uh, negative effects of A and the opposite way uh, also. Then 
based on that, we are able to create a so-called regression set of goal G for a relevant action A um, and in the following way that we subtract those effects from uh, of A from G and we add a precondition of A and we get something which estimates, uh, let's say, um, the previous state. And in this way, we are able to uh, create the algorithm that works in opposite way. So basically from the goal going backward to the uh, initial state as zero. And uh, the algorithm is very similar. The only change is that instead of um, applicable actions, we search for relevant actions from the goal point of view. And the plan is chained in opposite way. So far, we spoke about uh, the way that we search through the state space. So basically, we have a uh, space of word states uh, as a graph, and we search through that graph. However, it is also possible to search through the plants. Uh, so instead of, in this case, each node represent a partially specified plants plan and the edges are basically refinement operations of plants in other words uh, node is a plan you perform a refinement operation and you get another plan which has uh, which is more specific so instead of using kind of total ordered plans and so on, here we need to use partial order plans. Uh, partial order plans means that you specify the temporary ordering of actions. In other words, what action mu must proceed uh, before the other action. Uh, from this point of view, you know exactly why such an action uh, is applied uh, and how it helps to achieve uh, the plan. And of course, uh, in the background, we need to solve uh, different variable bindings. So uh, in the plan space planning, uh, we deal with the precedence constraints that the action alpha must be performed before action beta written in this following way. And then we have a, a set of constraints, binding constraints, which might be either, let's say, specify inequality. For example, the variable must be different from other uh, variable, or a, a variable v1 is different from a specific constant, or equality constraint and substitution. Like, for example, that uh, uh, variable v1 must be equal, um, uh, let's say the value of variable v1 must be equal to the value of variable v2 or v1 must be a specific constant and so on. And then we deal with so-called causal links. Uh, causal links means that action alpha uh, is used for creation of preconditions P that is required by action beta. So action alpha has an effect that is equal to precondition P of action beta. Uh, from the causal link point of view, there are some threats. And here is how to wield them. With, uh, deal with that. Uh, so formally, we have causal link as an ordering relation. So we, if we have a two actions, alpha 1 and alpha 2, belonging to the plan, then if there is a, a variable or liter x that belongs to the uh, preconditions alpha 2, and x 
is an effect of alpha 1, then alpha 1 must proceed uh, before alpha 2. Actually, the alpha 1 through its effect provides letter for uh, mm, or, uh, or uh, let's say the atom for uh, mm, precondition of alpha 2. And basically we during the creation of the partial plan we uh, in that causal links uh, that uh, enables, uh, let's say, uh, to satisfy uh, uh, the plan. So, and we write uh, alpha 1 supplies x for alpha 2, uh, where x is belongs to the effects of alpha 1, and x also belongs to the preconditions alpha 2, and uh, we, let's say, need to uh, prescribe that alpha 2 precedes uh, uh, alpha 2, alpha 1, alpha 2. Now, here we have a two threads. One is called so-called negative threat uh, to causal link. Imagine that you have a, that alpha 1 provides, uh, supplies, Q for alpha 3 in the plan. And then you try to introduce uh, action alpha 2 um, and you find that uh, if alpha 1 precedes alpha 2 and alpha 2 precedes alpha 3 that these two links are consistent with the plan. However, it might happen that uh, there is a atom in the effects of alpha 2 that can cause that the Q here is removed. So if you introduce alpha uh, um, 2 action between alpha 1 and alpha 3, there is a threat that Q can be removed. And uh, on, there is also opposite situation, so-called positive threat to a causal link and uh, that is defined similarly. However, instead of removing of Q, uh, uh, this is adding Q. Uh, how these, uh, how th these uh, issues can be solved? Well, by so-called demotion or promotion or a variable binding constraint. So you can either to bind the variable that is able to, let's say, protect these kind of uh, effect, or basically you need to put alpha 2 before alpha 2 uh, alpha 1 or to promote alpha 2 beyond alpha 3 okay this is how these uh, uh, partial uh, mm, partial plans can be uh, uh, created Basically, the algorithms otherwise are very similar to those which I uh, already presented. Planning graph techniques. In 1997, uh, it was discovered that some issues of the classical planning uh, algorithms can be resolved. Uh, well, what was the issue? Uh, if you use the, this uh, kind of so far presented algorithm, you are not able to uh, uh, basically to protect the algorithm before uh, looping. It can create a loop and then basically it, it, it extends the plan uh, in infinite looping and it is not able to find a way out. Uh, in 1997, uh, it was discovered that uh, the plan can be created in a parallel way. Uh, it, is the, it uses a special structure, so-called planning graph. You will see that just shortly, like this. And 
the idea is very similar to dynamic programming or network flow solution. Basically, all plans are built concurrently. There is a so-called graph expansion um, phase when you create the graph in forward run. And if you think that uh, the graph is sufficiently large and that you found the solution, then you run it in the backward way uh, when basically you search through uh, for the, let's say, actual plan. In this graph, uh, the planner maintains so-called mutually exclusive relations, called shortly mutex, between the nodes uh, um, that are represented again, uh, let's say, actions and states uh, propositions. Because, uh, uh, let's say, uh, you derive uh, uh, the fully graph, uh, the cycling issue is removed. Uh, uh, as although there are basically plants um, uh, discovered uh, that uses also this, uh, they struggle with that looping, there are also other plants that we are search, uh, let's say, are able to search for that does not have this issue. Uh, the issue with this uh, approach is that um, it cannot work with the parameters. So basically with variables, you only have uh, instances. So basically it creates a huge space of propositions. On the other side, uh, there are many supporting strategies that are able to speed it, uh, speed up the planning significantly. And uh, well, let's say uh, even, let's say some 15 years ago, uh, uh, it was possible to do, let's say, 100 action calls in minutes and so on. Uh, how that planning graph looks like? Well, you have a, a description of states. There's basically uh, um, what is, you have literals here, basically each node is literal and it is either valid or invalid. And uh, basically here you have uh, actions and it says if this uh, two letters are valid, then you are able to produce uh, this letters uh, again here. That's the, mm, uh, let's say the, from the, uh, let's say application of actions and here basically those dotted lines I hope that you can see that are the mutexes so uh, it says these two letters cannot be uh, satisfied, uh, satisfied uh, in the same time and in actions it means uh, these two actions cannot be uh, uh, cannot be executed in the parallel way. So basically, the planning graph is a directed layered graph with the two types of layers. Uh, the layer of literals uh, basically describes what is satisfied at the step I. And the layer of, of actions uh, is basically a list uh, or basically it somehow describes what actions uh, in which conditions can be satisfied in the step I. And uh, basically when you create that graph, uh, you apply the following uh, actions to create those mutexes. Uh, mutex is between two actions. If those actions has inconsistent effects, so basically one action negates the effect of the other, so basically they go against each other, they interfere, uh, that means 
uh, if uh, effect of one action is negation of the precondition of the other, or uh, they have a competing needs. That means one of the preconditions uh, of one action is mutually exclusive with the preconditions of the other one. Um, that's the at the level of actions. Mutex is at litters. Uh, uh, just basically, uh, you check if it has inconsistent support. That means uh, one is the negation of the other, or if each possible pair of action that could achieve these two litters is mutually exclusive. Basically, you are not able to find two, uh, let's say, uh, actions that are able to uh, uh, produce these two letters in uh, a specific time of the, let's say, a specific step. OK, implementation of planners. Uh, the initial attempts is uh, STRIPS 1971, the first planner. Uh, as I said, kind of regressive planning through the action preconditions. Then, based on the state and plan space searching, uh, war plan was created. Uh, furthermore, let's say P week, tweak, and UCPOP, and uh, let's say this kind of category of planners. Uh, the war plan is linear planner. However, uh, there is a specific phenomena like Susman anomaly solved, um, a Susman anomaly, which is a kind of how to tackle the issues that if you create um, a linear one plan uh, and it is not able to satisfy one condition, and if you create it in a slightly different way that the, in another condition is not satisfied, how to uh, tweak. Uh, how to intertwine those actions uh, that the let's say the, uh, the let's say the goals can can be accomplished. Uh, these P week tweak UCPOP are uh, partial order plans. Then in 1997, graph plan uh, was introduced, and uh, this uh, 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 removed the cycling, and furthermore. Uh, it can be shown that graph plan is able to, um, uh, let's say, provide the heuristics. So, in all modern uh, uh, planners, uh, like for example, black box, even now FF, uh, they use a combination of the graph plan with a, uh, uh, another kind of uh, these previous, uh, let's say, planners. And uh, actually, what what is the heuristic? If you go back to the this uh, planning graph, uh, the forward run is has a polynomial time, and you are basically able to uh, count calculate the number of uh, uh, letters that can that already satisfies the goals. So. As you go to the right, uh, you are able to evaluate how close you are from uh, from the final state. In the opposite way, if you search through the uh, for the plan, it can be shown that it is uh, um, uh, be, um, that is still very uh, let's say complex, uh, basically NP problem, uh, and. Um, Therefore, uh, the modern planners use that only the forward run to estimate uh, the distance from the goal, and uh, that heuristics is used in traditional planners. So let me approach, uh, let's say, the second half of the lecture which is dedicated to the HTN planning. HTN planning is a kind of hierarchical planning, uh, short for uh, hierarchical task net planning. Uh, the basic idea is that the, if you observe the complex plan, that uh, there are some 
uh, let's say structures that can be identified and uh, they are repeated and they can capture uh, let's say the structure can be captured as a kind of hierarchy of abstract plans and those plans uh, sub plans are often almost independent of each other example if you try to uh, to get to the conference in town X you go to the airplane you take the plane and then go to the conference hotel to get to the airport you take either the like you, you need to drive there or to take a cab and to take the cab it means if you have enough money for the fare then you can take a cab either you call ahead or flag Cape Town or uh, you just enter the cab and say I want to go to Y and wait until you are at that place pair the fare and the exit the cab so, uh, in fact, this is a kind of decomposition of the task. From the very abstract point of view, I would like to get to the conference uh, till, uh, let's say, the primitive task like that you just pair, pay the fare. Uh, in classical planning, uh, basically, you use the same kind of states as in classical planning that means you use the states of the word represented as a set of atoms and actions that correspond to deterministic state transitions so in fact basically uh, you describe uh, what is available on the scene in the state and uh, uh, while in classical planning however uh, uh, the objective is to uh, mm, to create uh, basically step by step um, uh, a goal and you have a terms, literals, operators and actions uh, resulting in plans. In HTN planning the objective is to perform a set of tasks uh, where these terms are used as in the classical planning however you add also so-called task methods and task networks and one of the features is that these tasks can be decomposed into the subtasks of course it generates constraints um, and uh, you need to backtrack if necessary example you try to uh, build a house well uh, the decompos decomposition of tasks um, maybe you are familiar with a uh, make system how to create uh, uh, executable uh, from the source uh, you know, let's say um, codes uh, and you know that uh, basically um, the final task of uh, let's say making the executable is decomposed to the linking and linking is decomposed into the compilations and so on here it is basically the similar uh, it, it, it even the make is a kind of HTN plan but very simple one um, if you go to the example like this build a house it decompose um, to the task that you need to find the uh, let's say obtain the permit to hire the builder create construct the house and the pay the builder and this construction are again can be decomposed to the other tasks like build the foundation build the frame build the roof build the walls build interior and so on of course this is just the decomposition behind there is a number of variables that uh, are uh, let's say that, that constrain the solution and if uh, if you use it as a, as a planning so basically a kind of virtual simulation of the process uh, you might uh, uh, let's say hit this mm, situation when you are not able to uh, continue further so you need to backtrack and to find another let's say uh, another decomposition and that's the different for example from the make which basically goes in the very deterministic way so the task uh, is an expression uh, that has the name or symbol and uh, these uh, parameters are terms uh, it can be a variable, constant, or function expression, like uh, that the function is applied to other parameters. 
other terms. Example, for example, move block, uh, and uh, uh, here you have a variable or move block, and there is a list of uh, variables and so on, composition. You have uh, two types of tasks. One of them is non-primitive compound. Actually, this is the task that can be decomposed into subtasks. And the primitive one, which cannot be decomposed, and you know how to perform that task directly. And in fact, the task name uh, task name um, uh, reflects the operator name. For example, like you know how uh, to drive the truck from the location um, from to location two. So. Uh, here we use the shop syntax uh, for the methods and operators. So the method is how it can be described. A method, uh, it has the name, uh, possibly with the variables. And then there is basically, it is like, if something happens, do this. If not, and this uh, uh, is valid, do this a different way. So N1 uh, is optional, and it is the name uh, for that part which is valid. C1 is a precondition, and uh, T1 is the uh, list of the decompositions, uh, of, the, of the decomposition, given decomposition. If this is not applied, then uh, you have another name, other precondition that uh, m must be valid to be able to do the composition T2 and so on. Operator. Operator is just the application, so basically it is a primitive uh, task. It has the head, it has a precondition to check, uh, uh, and as in the classical planning approach, um, delete list and add list of atoms. So the method, uh, like uh, to drive truck, uh, tr uh, specific truck from one location to another one, is if location from and location to are the same, then do nothing, primitive operator. Or if they are different, so then we apply the operator drive truck uh, from the location uh, one to location two. Uh, as you can see, drive truck is method. Here it is the operator uh, uh, labeled by the exclamation mark. And the operator is described like uh, uh, precondition is nothing, but uh, at the beginning, you delete, uh, let's say, the track is uh, in location from, and you add that the track is lo in location to. So method can be decomposed into to-do situation, do nothing, or actually to drive. Operator is how to drive. That means basically what to do, what to delete, what to add. OK, the algorithms. The simple one is STN, Simple Task Network. <clears throat> and you have a two, uh, two possibilities. One was implemented in shop, uh, the other one, for example, in shop two. So-called TFD is so-called Total Order Forward Decomposition. It is assumed that tasks uh, are totally ordered. And the output is totally ordered plan. Uh, in PFD, partial order, basically use the same kind of uh, direction of the decomposition. However, you deal with the partially ordered tasks, not with the totally ordered, but partially ordered. So here, basically, you start to build a sequence from the left to the right, step by step, 
through the sequence, while here you create those pairs, how the tasks are partially ordered. And if, if you think that you have uh, all uh, actions, uh, let's say, uh, all, or task resolved, and uh, the, you are able to create, uh, let's say, the plan, then you have a totally ordered plan, uh, let's say, by the linearization. STN is even the generalization of the STN, and it was implemented in other planners like Nonlin, OPlan, Cyp2, UMCP, and so on. In fact, uh, the decomposition uh, uh, is can be very general one. Uh, basically, you can create any kind of task networks how they depend on each other, and you replace a uh, parts of the network by other uh, sub-networks, where uh, uh, basically you try to decompose those tasks step by step in such a way that you, you end up with a uh, network only uh, performed by operators. Uh, Otherwise, uh, basically, it uh, it is the same. So basically, you have partial order task, and uh, the resulting plan is a partial order, uh, let's say, plan. So when you have a STN, you deal with a cycling graph. You have a set of nodes, a set of edges. Uh, if you deal with the HTN, basically deal with a set of tasks, set of constraints uh, that allow, uh, let's say, to deal with the general task networks. And you have different planning procedures uh, for the decomposition. Uh, in, if you search the space, uh, actually, the Goal state is an abstract task that can be achieved. It is not the state of the world. Okay, so at the beginning, uh, you have a, a abstract task that serves as a goal state, and you search through the space uh, again of this task, and uh, they are not directly linked to the uh, state uh, of the world. And the operators that uh, uh, navigates you through the space is the decomposition of the task into the subtask. Of course, you need uh, uh, the, well, let's say take care about the parameters of the task and to solve the conflicts uh, or let's say the bindings of variable. Uh, pseudo code for the TFD basically. Uh, follow the same kind of procedure you could see so far. So uh, it is that total order uh, forward decomposition, uh, basically called at the uh, state S with a, a current uh, maintained sequence task uh, T1 from TK, and uh, basically operator domain and uh, uh, method domain. If uh, mm, K is zero, that means you know that the, basically you accomplish all tasks and you have an empty plan uh, and you return it. If T1 at the beginning is a primitive, you know that you need to, f uh, it is an operator, so uh, basically you need to find all, uh, let's say, the ground instance by substitutions, uh, that are relevant to that situation, and in that way you create the bindings for variables uh, and to find, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the actions that can be uh, applied to this. If that is empty, you return the failure. If not, you uh, uh, let's say you select one of the actions uh, and uh, you you create uh, another instance uh, of that plan. Basically, you chop. Uh, uh, the first task, uh, however, you deal with the substitution and you uh, you change uh, the state to the, let's say, state which is uh, a, a result after the application of action A. 
If P is a failure, then return a failure. If not, you chain. If it is not a primitive, then you basically try to find a, such a method that can be used uh, for uh, decomposition of T1. Uh, again, trying to find all relevant, uh, mm, uh, let's say, methods that are relevant from the substitution point of view and uh, and the actual sigma is a substitution and method is applicable to that uh, state again if the set is empty that you know that no action can be applied and you return the failure if not you select determine non-deterministically uh, any of these methods with that substitution um, you apply uh, the the, uh, the method the substitution and you return uh, the following uh, let's say state uh, through that space and you uh, basically work in this way HN is very similar you deal with the precedence uh, resources constraints again uh, and you continue with from the extract plan to uh, uh, to the instantiated one that contains only the primitive operators and then basically you try to create the totally ordered instantiated plan where all variables are bound and again basically following the same way uh, if uh, uh, the task and constraint has no solution you return nothing if uh, if it is instantiated plan you just order that and you return it or if you don't succeed, you need to return the failure. If it is an um, abstract task, then you try to find a method that can be used for the decomposition. And of course, you apply that um, uh, task, which is, uh, let's say, uh, replacing uh, another, uh, the, uh, the task uh, from the list you are already able to solve. Uh, you need to reflect the constraints and then based on the new situation you propagate those constraints through the uh, remaining task so called you apply the critics and you receive uh, let's say another uh, let's say uh, state of the uh, problem and you try to solve that and you continue in this way where is the power of this method uh, you uh, encode the domain knowledge instead of uh, what must be achieved you say how it can be achieved so it is very general uh, approach for example you don't need to know exactly why you um, uh, let's say if you bake a pizza uh, that uh, uh, why you do those steps you only remember that in the specific time you perform such and such actions during the baking uh, and um, and it, it, here it is the same way you s just say how not why you do that and what to do uh, it it can be much easier to specify the domains however uh, that issue is that you need to specify specify all possible goals because uh, the goals are specified by the abstract task. You need uh, to specify all possible abstract tasks. Uh, from the complexity point of view, still we are in the domain of NP completeness. Uh, uh, we are uh, we face the problem of infinite loops. Uh, and can be quite, uh, let's say, uh, uh, intensive computation before you find that the plan is basically illegal and cannot be corrected. Uh, there are a number of extensions, like, for example, you can detect uh, earlier the threats. Uh, the methods can include preconditions uh, and uh, these th uh, uh, that enables us to, to find the threats earlier in the planning process. You can also integrate in uh, resource uh, resources uh, and other, let's say, uh, extensions. Example, as I mentioned, are for example shop and shop two. Uh, basically, shop is forward search linear planner. 
basically the plans are allocated in the same way as the execution is performed. And it, it, essentially it is a deferred search. Uh, the operators has uh, no preconditions, um, no concurrent actions are allowed. On the other side, you are able to uh, perform uh, some special operations in the operators uh, like numerical calculations and so on. So the planning algorithm is quite uh, efficient, even a bit uh, inflexible. Uh, here, is, uh, uh, here is the example. Operator put down block. You have a delete list, add list. The operator method. Uh, you have a name of the method and parameters. Applicability condition. If it is clear, you do nothing. Or uh, method make clear applicability condition like if x is on uh, y that uh, you perform this list of tasks. Uh, it is used uh, everywhere possible in government, in industry, university projects, everywhere. Uh, here is the example of, of uh, old plan planner and you can see the method preconditions effect where it is applicable uh, how um, it is decomposed the expansion how it, how the tasks are ordered uh, links what uh, uh, causal links are uh, performed uh, you can also even uh, supply the let's say um, the timing issues and the resources PyHop. Last three slides uh, with a PyHop. PyHop is very simple HTML planner written in Python. Uh, it works in both, two, uh, let's say, 2x and 3x implementations. Uh, the planning algorithm is very similar to the shop algorithm. Uh, the main difference is that uh, HTML operators and methods are basically ordinary Python functions. The current state uh, is represented as a, a Python object that contains variable bindings. Uh, mm, so, and the operators and methods uh, refer uh, to the state explicitly, for example, to say uh, that um, C is on A, you say, for example, S dot, now, for example, location C uh, is A where S is the current state. It is very easy to implement and understand. It is basically exceptionally very low number of lines because usually the planners are thousands, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say many thousands of lines of code. This one is basically 150 lines. Uh, it can be uh, uh, downloaded from this uh, website. Uh, and uh, let's say, we have a abstract specification of the uh, actions and here it is how it is reflected in, uh, in Python basically saying if you try to specify the walk with these variables uh, with uh, and preconditions is like this uh, uh, like location a is x and effect is location y is y a is y then in uh, Python, you write, okay, def function name state, always the state as the first parameter. And here are the parameters A, X, Y, as it was here. You, you perform the check, the condition, and return either the state or uh, uh, new state, basically you change the Y. And, or if it is not applicable, you return false. Uh, and you basically you can do the same thing here it is basically repeated several times uh, methods that means the decomposition like here for example the, the uh, method travel by food travel by taxi um, and uh, preconditions and how it is decomposed here it is just one uh, call walk uh, here are, we have uh, three methods to call uh, and here it is in Python, basically saying, okay, if you travel by foot, 
uh, and the condition is that it is uh, lower than four, then you use the composition with a, uh, let's say, a single, uh, a single uh, task. Uh, and you say, OK, apply walk with the parameters A, X, and Y. I would like to stress here, it is here walk, although it is a, a like calling walk, the actual uh, function here, you do that by string. And the, the reason here it is that Python needs to operate uh, with uh, these methods and operators before it is called in the specific situation. So, uh, and it is uh, done through the, uh, let's say, specification using strings of the methods. Remember that who will use uh, directly the walk without the apostrophe and so on, it will run into the problems. Uh, travel by taxi, you have a, again, first state, uh, and parameters, condition, preconditions, if it is valid, you can decompose as a sequence of three uh, other methods. And again, mind please the strings. Uh, and you declare the methods like, uh, let's say, uh, uh, like this in this way. Then st initial state, uh, abstract way uh, coded like this in uh, Python in PyHop, it is like you create a state and you create specific, let's say, slots uh, and represent it, uh, let's say, using dictionaries uh, with the, let's say, relations of the objects as you wish to check. Uh, then the task is just travel me uh, from home to park. These are, the, let's say, uh, the uh, from the abstract point of view, uh, PyHop is uh, basically invoked using this approach, like uh, you are starting from the state one, and the first uh, abstract task that should be decomposed is a travel, me, home, and park, you, using apostrophes because these are the, uh, let's say, uh, constants of objects that are operated, travel is, uh, let's say, the abstract label of uh, the given method. And you will get, uh, let's say, from the abstract point of view, a solution like, like a sequence like this. In, uh, in uh, PyHop, you will get in the following way. OK, that's everything for me. I am sorry for taking four more minutes. Uh, and is there any question, uh, uh, finally? No question? Everything is clear. So you are able to uh, you are prepare for, even for the assignment, if it is uh, using uh, planning. If you try to, uh, let's say, to test or uh, to play with the planners, I really uh, recommend to use PyHop uh, uh, for the first touch because it is very easy. It is you are able to check everything what is going on, and it is exceptionally short because all other implementations, as I said, are let's say, 1,000 lines of code long written in uh, C, plus, C or C++, and it is not very easy to, uh, to basically to see the actually uh, the algorithm. So if no question is arriving, I am stopping uh, 